And on the website, theweightliftingscoop.com, we have a Facebook group where the team interacts. And myself and Becca Gurdon, we coach the team. She's one of the weightlifters on Muscle Driver as well. Mm. And uh, we do the programming. And, and um, right now we got about 11 people on the, on the team who most of them lift five to six days a week. Um, they came from a CrossFit background and were, had already built up to that level. Um, if someone is a master's lifter, we usually give them about 10% less volume, maybe more, just depending on their personal uh, schedule and, and abilities. But, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, just interacting with everyone. And uh, the podcast itself is great. Um, you know, guys on the team. Most of the time it's, it's me, James, and Glenn, and then we try to get other people in there when they're available. Uh, I think if you're missing too much as a beginner, you're building bad habits. But at the same time, if you never miss a lift, you're not pushing yourself. So in general, I think if you're making between 6 and 8 out of 10 attempts with good, proper technique, you're, you're usually in the right weight range. As a beginner, a lot of times we might start out a workout and do 10 singles on the minute and have them start out at 80%. And then if they make two good ones, we'll have them start adding weight every rep until they miss. Once they miss, we bring the weight back down to 80% again and have them finish the 10 reps. And that's just kind of a self-regulating way to ensure that, the, that a beginner is within the right percentage range. I mean, as an advanced lifter, I think you have to push yourself and push yourself to the limit. I, I really believe personally in a lot of heavy attempts, and I think it's totally okay to miss. I mean, after you've been lifting for 8 to 10 years, you've made 99% of your lifts. I mean, you've made thousands and thousands of lifts, so having five or six misses in a row is not going to destroy your technique or anything else, your mindset or anything. Um, I, I've missed a weight six to ten times and then made it before, and sometimes that weight is a PR. And if I didn't keep going, I wouldn't have made that PR and had that mental breakthrough. There's that analogy, I guess, maybe John Bros uses it, and he has some overly extreme views. But at the same time, one of the, the things that he says, if you were in jail and, and, and somebody told you in four weeks you had to add 10% to your snatch, so 10, 10, 15 kilos to your snatch, or they were going to kill your family, how would you train? Would you do workouts where you did 70% for triples, or would you, I mean, most of the time when you ask people that, they say, they're like, well, I would go heavy. It's like, would you go heavy three times a week, or would you go every day? They usually say they would go every day, multiple times a day, as heavy as they could. So I don't really think it's a matter of the correct sets and reps that you need to do as an advanced lifter. I think it's more about the urgency. So if you had to do it, I think you could. But it's really hard when you don't have to, to trick your mind into believing that you have to. And as a beginner, I think it's totally different. You have to take a step back, do a lot of percentage work to hammer in the technique. But at the same time, lifting a light weight is a different skill than lifting a heavy weight. So you do have to push the envelope at times, even as a beginner. Well, uh, at the point where you're at the Nationals, I would say actually, like, don't think about anything. Um, that's my personal advice, because once you're there, you've done all the preparation. You know, I... I personally do not have a focal point. I just go out there and lift the weight. I don't even know what happens. Uh, most of the time, there's it's honestly like dark space from the time um, I touch the bar in the back to the end of the meet. Um, so it's especially, I don't even really remember the attempts that I take in a competition because I'm trying not to think. I'm just trying to get pumped up. If I'm feeling a little lightheaded, I might... Uh, pop an ammonia capsule or something um, but you know I'm not really thinking about any technical cues or finding a focal point or anything like that you just want to let it flow and and have fun with it um, as far as like outside of the actual competition 
I would say be prepared. Make sure that you have a meal after weigh-ins. Make sure that you have some water and Gatorade for during the competition. Um, because if you're thinking about those things while you're competing and stressed out right after weigh-ins, it's really hard to just put all your energy into the lifting, which is what you really want to happen. One more thing that I was going to say is that at a meet, um, or, or just in training, like, don't focus on the things that you can't control. Just focus on the task at hand. So when the weight is loaded for you, go lift the bar. Don't worry about how much your competitor is going to lift or how much, you know, what your competitors are doing. You cannot control that. So a lot of people try to con control the things that they cannot control. So being able to distinguish those. Uh, the day before the meet, I, I usually, if at all possible, try to stay in my room, because we're usually at a hotel. So I try to stay in my room and read most of the day and just relax. Um, as far as the, the day of the meet, you know, if I have to cut weight, I'll usually try to do it as close to the weigh-in as possible. And I'll try to have my bag packed and my food ready to go. So that as soon as I make weight, I can go right to the weigh-in. And every meet's different. The, the, the weigh-in can be in the hotel that you're staying at, or it can be as much as 40 minutes away if you're at an international meet. So that situation is going to be completely different meet to meet. But I definitely try to you know, stay in the day before is the main thing. You don't need to go and watch every single session. It's really taxing to watch weightlifting, especially if you're emotionally invested. If it's your teammates or your your uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, um, it, it becomes more and more stressful to watch the closer that person is with you. Well, there, I mean, definitely, that, that happens no matter what level you're at. Um, like, uh, so Jared Fleming just started training with us, and uh, he's been having some back issues, and, and so have I. So, I mean, when you're coming back and you're trying to push and you do feel a little bit of pain, you become timid. And that's, like, the last thing that you want to happen when you're trying to avoid injury. But he's been a little tentative to try these heavyweights recently, and even though he's done a lot more in the past. And even just yesterday, um, James Tatum was attempting 163 in the clean jerk, not typically a heavy weight for him. And he said, for some reason today, I just have a mental block about clean jerks. You know, um, he's done that weight hundreds of times probably. And even just yesterday, 163 was a mental block. So finally he got through that. Um, and it wasn't even a new PR. So it's the same thing that happens with a new PR, but sometimes you just, when you're not 100% in shape or you're fatigued, you kind of get a mental block out on a weight that is not heavy for you. And, um, I mean, how do you get through it? You just, you have to, you have to know when to push through it and when not to. Um, but you obviously have to have confidence and you have to believe in yourself. You have to see yourself doing it first. Because you can't just go in there cold turkey, not believing you're going to make it and expect to make it. Yeah. So. yeah. For the most part, we're just going to be going from the floor uh, as it gets close to competition. So it's going to become singles from the floor, um, squats, and push presses for me personally. Okay. Um, so push press being the upper body strength, squats obviously being the lower body and back strength, and then the lifts to keep them fresh. So most of the time when you're when you're within like six weeks of a meet, you're trying to maintain your strength in the squat and push press without overdoing it. So you're trying to do as little as possible on your strength work to maintain your best. So. On meet day, you want to be capable of squatting a PR, but you don't want to have necessarily done anything that would have 
fatigued you so much that you couldn't squat a PR on meet day? Because obviously you're not competing in the squat. Uh, for me personally, I, I keep in the push press. Now, a lot of the other lifters stop push pressing four weeks out from a meet. Um, my joints don't, like, I don't have a hyperextended elbow, you know, like that is my lockout. So it's it's not like bent, but it's 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 not completely straight either, right? So I think it's more important for someone like me who doesn't have hyperextended joints or, or elbows specifically to do more upper body pressing and push pressing. Whereas someone who has an inverted lockout or hyperextended lockout, they may never have to do a push press ever to, to be able to do a ton of weight in the jerk. But for injury prevention, they still should do some of that stuff. But it's not necessarily directly going to carry over. For me, it seems to directly carry over. And when I cut it out, I start missing jerks in competition.